This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm Attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. In the wake of Bob Saget's passing, Josh Gad shared a really cool video that Bob Saget sent to his daughters after finding out that they were fans of his old sitcom, Full House. And, uh, you know, Bob Saget sent the video to Gad's daughters in late 2020. Here's a clip of that. Hi, Ava and Izzy. It's Bob Saget here. Danny Tanner, right? (laughs) Um, I'm older than the guy you're watching on the TV. And I hope you keep watching Full House because I have become Danny Tanner. I use, like hand sanitizer all day long. I, I I have become Danny Tanner. I just kind of talked to your dad for the first time and you're just very fortunate. Of course, he loves you guys so much and he is just one of the sweetest people I've ever spoken to. Uh, congrats on having a great dad. That's awesome. It's cool that you, you know, shared say- that with all of us. Dude, I don't know if you saw. I mean, it's just amazing how many people that like really ended up having great friendships with Bob Saget. I didn't know that Steve, our agent, had a great friendship with Bob Saget. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we, uh, we've had him on the show. I've talked. I've, I just I, I can't believe it never came up in the conversations I had. It seems like everybody is just saying what a great dude he was. He was good to everybody, which is. I mean, good on him that he was able to keep a great attitude and it seemed like nothing was a problem for him. He'd be, you know, he just, he, he seemed delighted to be able to bring joy to people like with that video. And what a cool thing for Josh Gad. I mean, you're absolutely right. I saw the post from our agent, Paul, that like pictures with him and he just seemed like they were very close, which I did not know either. So, you know, thoughts obviously go to Paul because he lost a good friend. Not only all of us lost someone that we were fans of, but it sounded like a good friend for him as well. Uh, but uh, Josh Gad, what a great dad flex. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, yeah. I think his kids are like under 10, like 7, 10, maybe like around that age. Or they're young and they're watching Full House, which is pretty funny as it is. And he's just like watching it with them. He's like, you know, I know I could get a hold of the guy that they love, get a video. And I look like that. I would pull that move, too, if I was him. Yeah, 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 yeah. this is. You know, you know, that happened for me one time in my career where I, cause I don't like to do that kind of stuff. I don't like to ask celebrities or anything of, of, of for, for anything. But so you have ask, us ask the celebrities for yeah, it. Yeah. So it makes it a lot easier. Right. But I did, I did ask one person and it was really big in Sarah's life when Billy Piper, who played a Doctor Who character, actually gave her a happy birthday wish on our show and I got to play it back for Sarah. And it just made that moment. So it's, it's those little things when, when, you know, celebrities do that. That. They don't have to, and I get they get asked to do a lot of things, but it really does make a difference. And I bet it was a huge difference, like you said, a great dad flex and a great kid, you know, a great kid moment. Oh yeah, I hope that one day, whatever. I mean, I don't know how to get a hold of. I I, I did save the the tweet that Peppa Pig put out when I said, "Oh the yeah, to Peppa that was Pig, a beautiful, she what said, a great dad flex." <laughs> and Peppa Pig was just like, "Oh, Tatum's adorable," or something like that. And See I, that? And I said, "Bluey tweet at her as well." So I saved these. So one you day, have to save those. When she's old enough, I'd be like, look, your dad did some cool stuff for you. 
As I soon as you got Peppa Pig and Bluey to tweet to you, dude, you keep that in your back pocket because you know, you know, as soon as Tatum can really have like extended conversations where you feel like she's grasping everything you're saying to her, and she can come back to you with, you know, you can really have that. You you pull that out because she'll still know who those people are. Yeah, she was telling me like that. I would, I like Peppa when I was two. Like this isn't that cool. Yeah, but at three years old, I think she she still should at least remember Peppa, right? I got to get a hand on the guy who's the voice of Frosty. Oh, that around? guy's not with us anymore. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that, that's an old, that's an old, old. Because my frosty impression's not very good. Yeah, like, she gets excited because we have a frosty the snowman stuffed animal thingy or stuffed yeah. frosty. Happy really- birthday! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, listen. Wow, it, it, whenever man. I get to whenever I get to meet Tatum, I am going to. That's my first line, and hopefully she gets it. She'll probably sing happy birthday to you. That's yeah. like that's the thing right now. She just randomly sings happy birthday. And yesterday was it was one of those cute moments. She sat down Frosty and she's got like this fake cake that has a birthday candle and she put it in front of Frosty and sang happy birthday and then made Frosty blow out the candle. Aww. But she oh, shoved yeah. But I gotta work with her on how she does it because she just took Frosty's head and shoved it into the candle. If it was a real candle, Frosty would be melting. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, wow, you, gotta, yeah. you know, I mean I granted she's getting ready for the wedding, you know, just basically shove, you're shoving a person's face in the candle. <laughs> but, in there. Yeah, but for Frosty that's yeah, that, yeah. that candle could be a problem. Yeah. We got this guy, his name is Simon, and he used to be a prominent transplant surgeon in the UK. But Simon lost his medical license. Why? This is a beating. I mean, this is this is amazing. Simon lost his medical license because he was caught carving his initials into two people's livers. I mean, I mean, <laughs> what? Do you think when he was a kid, he'd carve his initials in like fresh cement? Yeah. He seems like and that kind of guy. trees and like literally anything. His school, school desk. desk. <laughs> oh. <Jinx. laughs> Sharing a brain today. This is amazing. Carving his initials into the livers of two different people. And it happened uh, back in 2013. Well, I have a question. Does it hurt the person? I mean, I, I, I know you shouldn't do it, but is it do any, like, is it just I silly think they're all, I feel like if you have access to somebody's liver, Steve, they're under the influence of anesthesia. I would <laughs> hope so. Yeah, yeah, right. So I don't know how it, I, it, I mean, like, so I, I mean, you, you, are, do they, in other words, do you think, do they feel any pain or do you think, does it have any lasting effects that could hurt them right, later like, on? You know, your liver was doing pretty good, but we've noticed that it's not functioning properly because it has the initials BJ in it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a doctor to know if this has long term effects. I'm sure it didn't hurt them while they were under, you know, as far as I, I mean, you don't feel the pain of it. I mean, if they're cutting into your body, pretty, I'm pretty sure carving initials into your liver is not going to be any more painful. Uh, but he did it with a device called an argon beam coagulator, which sounds like a, a Star Trek rifle. Uh, he, um, each letter was about an inch and a half tall. Damn. Okay. Those are big initials. I- yeah. Um, and he was caught the following year when another surgeon did a follow-up procedure and saw Simon's initials. <laughs> wow. So it was Simon Bramhall, so SB. So they saw he saw SB on this dude's liver, and he's like, what the? And so... Uh, Not me, it was a different Simon Barhow. Wow. <laughs> he got, yeah, he, this is assault over there in the UK. That's, so he got convicted of two counts of assault back in 2017. Now, here's why he's back in the news, because he recently got his medical license back. Which, boy, I mean, it, you Dude, know, it almost it took him like nine years. Uh, but, you know, it's still uh, some people might think that he should never get it back. Like, how do you ever trust this guy again? It's a I'd tough give one. it back to him. But then again, I'm probably not the person you want in charge of giving people their licenses back. <laughs> that's fair. That's a good point. Uh, you know, I, I it's it's I don't know how to feel about this. I mean, I, I don't think anybody deserves a death penalty on their job. You know, if you make a mistake, serve the time you serve and then you, you get a second chance. But boy, that you feel like this guy has just ridiculously bad judgment. Now, do you think he's a jokester or extremely narcissistic? That he like you know like how some doctors yes. you hear they have like that god that god complex where they're just like I'm the man. Or, oh yeah, I, I think so, so. He's like this is a work of art for me. Therefore, I'm going to sign it because I'm Simon. I'm going to go. With oh, that. I agree with you 100. Yeah, percent He's got kind of like dead eyes, like where yeah. you know he's done some stuff. He doesn't look like a guy that tells knock knock jokes. Or no. like that. So I don't think this was for a sense of humor. No, this well, is yeah, definitely that's... not the first time Daddy, either. This uh, is just the I, times he got caught. Again, he looks very similar to me. I, you know, well, honestly, why do the crazy people all look a little bit like me? Well, it's the eyes. Well. Yeah. Also, if you got work done by this guy, like what to Rev's point, like do you go into the doctor? and be like, can you check my liver for SBs? 
Yeah. Like, what is an SB? It's the initials. It's initials. Because, I mean, at but, that point, like, what if he's done it to multiple people and they just have only found two? I feel like there's a lawyer out there that'll file a lawsuit against this guy for anyone who has the SB. Yeah. It's like the Saul Goodman sort of thing. Just plaster plaster the commercials and say, hey, have you had this person as your doctor? You may be entitled to compensation. Well, yep. yeah, because, I mean, again, this happened in the UK, so I don't know what their laws are, but in the, you know, in the US, you know, you usually have the civil law lawsuits that have filed only because of the fact a lot of times you know the criminal lawsuits can't be proven without a you know, reasonable doubt so the civil is how they usually go after somebody but in this case i, I they, he was proven guilty so why wouldn't you go after him with a civil suit and get cash and he admitted that what he did was stupid and wrong uh, the one text has a good point like when he applied to get his license back did they have him sign the paperwork and did he just initial it like that <laughs> oh you had to yeah i mean otherwise otherwise you really don't come full circle with this whole thing that all being said uh, if I was getting my liver, like, something then done where I had, like, some kind of surgery, and I knew that this was a thing that you could do, I would totally be like, hey, man, while you're in there, can you grab that um, Star Trek apparatus that you have and just write MIGs on my liver? That's yeah, that, that's funny. what I want to know. Take I take a picture know. of it, of course. That way I can put it on my Facebook on the cover. That, you make an interesting point, Steve. We do stuff to our own bodies that some people might go, what the hell are you doing? You know, I mean, a lot of fo- a lot of folks think, why are you taking, why are you getting tattooed all over the place? You know, so if it doesn't hurt you, which, you know, like we know that for the most part, like, you know, any type of body art is, is safe. So therefore, if this doesn't really hurt you, what harm is done? I know you weren't asked, but if you're not physically like having any issues because of it, uh, that's easy money. It's you know, a harmless, you can... stupid thing, but he definitely deserves to be in trouble. But, oh, for but, sure. But I'm yeah. saying it's easy money. Like, I almost wish that I was a patient if I could sue him and get cash. Or what if, what right. if, what if right. he starts the new trend? Like, like li- uh, liver initials. It's like, or li- liver tattoos. Liver or art. Yeah, liver or art. art. Yeah, yeah. Organ, organ art. You're absolutely right. Wow. Then throw something on my stomach. Hey, can you put can you put my name on my intestines or whatever? Like, you know? Go to a bar. Like, yeah, that's that's a sweet flower tattoo that you have. But do you have a monkey playing the symbols on your liver like exactly. I do? Yeah, look at this. Here's a picture of it right here, buddy. Hey, you're the biggest Kraken fan. I got the Kraken logo on my liver now. I got yeah. groovy. Ta- I got groovy tattooed on my liver. Yeah. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, because now your liver, because you know, your liver's not going to do the job. It's going to let a lot of stuff out. Oh, so, oh. hey, rude. Well, it's true though. Someone even said, "What about all the people that were in the operating room watching him?" Like, yeah, he had to have been a douche because I would imagine they were all there, just like you know, walking on eggshells. Like, we know what he's doing is wrong, but do we say something to good yeah. old SB here? I mean, yeah, because you feel like people kind of would like, what do you need that Argon device for? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I think that somebody had to know. I want to see a picture of it. Like, what kind of initials? Like, did he have, is it cool? Like, is it like, oh, like if the font English is good, like, font? Yeah. does he have good calligraphy skills? Because if he does, then, you know, you be like, all right, well, the dude, really, you know, he can make a sign. Why can't he, you know? I want Calibri font. That's what I want. Oh, is that what you want? If yeah. it's oh, yeah. like most doctor's handwriting, though, you probably can't read it. So I'm surprised. Chicken they, scratch. They oh, good point. Yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, I'm surprised they noticed anything at that point. Or I want like the old school, like graffiti font, like the block, and then you like kind of work things into it. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, wow. You want that? Okay. Okay. I would totally have a, a liver. Well, yes, I mark. mean, we. I feel like the, you're the kind of guy that you'd be like, sure, you can do whatever you want to my body if you're going to make it decorative. <laughs> True. You know, I have a hot I, dog, I'm like, I have a wiener on my liver. <laughs> well, did you get a tattoo of a liver on your wiener and then make it complete? You know, or really? a rooster on my liver. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. I get all the free drinks at the bars if I did this. Yeah, I you, hope you, you, someone you have just, to have a good picture of it. There. I hope someone yeah. just tuned in right when you said that and just, yeah. just like, what are we even talking about? Yeah, even yeah. if they were listening from the very beginning of this break, they're still probably thinking, what are they even talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, at that point, that's that's on them. You know, for listening to us. <laughs> yeah, you got to listen place. all the time. Yeah, that's on them. You mm-hmm. know? And you might understand what the hell we're talking about. Hey, we get a, a guy's mom who accidentally took his pot brownies to a local senior center. Oh, boy. What happened? Oh, I'll tell you about this. I'll do it at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. 
$20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream. Are we close to building machines that are almost human? And can new technology give us superpowers? Find out on Super Sapiens. And in 1919, a British composer wrote the longest and most complex symphony in history. Conductors tried to perform it, but failed declaring it cursed. Now a group of musicians will attempt the impossible, if they dare, on Curse of the Gothic Symphony. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Oh, this is a cautionary tale about this 46-year-old dude named Michael. He's uh, an elementary school teacher in South Dakota. He also lives with his 73-year-old mom, Irene. Don't know the situation, whether or not he's there to help her or he... Or she's there to help him. Yeah, don't know. Um, and last Monday night, he made a big pan of brownies before bed. Then Irene found them the next morning and decided to take them to a card game at her local senior center. Yeah. Unfortunately, what Irene didn't realize is that they were very strong pot brownies made by her son, which has me really believe that he's not helping her. She's helping him because he's an idiot. He's just That's freeloading. It. Yeah. Or somewhat freeloading, maybe. He just got back from a trip to Colorado where he picked up a bunch of THC butter and cooked a half a pound of it into the brownies. Nice. Wow. Uh, 911 started getting calls around 8 p.m. Uh, because that multiple seniors had said, I've been poisoned, but they were just really high. Um, and, of course, recreational marijuana is is is, is still, I, I didn't know, still illegal in South Dakota. So even though Colorado, where he went, is to- it's okay. South Dakota, they're like, no, you know, pot's not okay here yet. So, Dude, this kind of happened here. You remember that? I do remember that. Well, this was a- way before it was legal. Yeah, this is many moons ago. Many different people have come and gone through these hallways uh, or the old hallways. But there was like a big gathering where it was at somebody's place. And that person had pot brownies or pot cookies. But they weren't meant for the part, like the gathering. But the people that were at the coworkers were there. I think somebody grabbed a cookie and not realizing it was a pot cookie and got really and, high. Yeah, and again, what are the, what's it doing now? If it's not meant for the party, why is it that somebody can see it? Even if it's off to the side. Yeah, you don't tease people of, with cookies. Yeah, if I see cookies off to the side, I'm like, well, it's got to be for the party. So I, uh, yeah. You should that at least have situation. a sign that says these cookies are not for you. Yeah, something on there to go, don't touch these. Which would make me want to touch them even more. Yeah, <laughs> which no. is what he could have done with the brownies. I mean, you're living with your 73-year-old mother. If anything, you know that if she sees a thing of brownies, okay, maybe you don't think, oh, she's going to bring them anywhere, but she probably would have one unless you would make sure, hey, don't do it. You know, I didn't even think about that, BJ. You know what? In a weird way, though, what the hell's wrong with her taking this guy's brownies? Right, yeah. Why is she assuming that those brownies are made for her? I mean, she just took the whole plate to bring it to people from work. All right. She's 73 years old. I don't know her mental state. Okay. I know that well, I forget things. You're going to blame her mental state on the fact that she, she supplied it for all her other old people? Yeah. She's a drug well, dealer. Yeah. She really yeah, is. I mean, you guys don't know what it's like to be old, but no. she could have in her own brain made up a story that, oh, look, these are nice brownies Doesn't you made make for me for right. my party. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back BJ on this one. My mom mom would totally do this like if I your made, mom's dumb oh i'm just saying so if you made like a whole plate of cookies and you're like man i made these cookies i can't wait to eat them tomorrow and then you wake up in the morning and they're gone because mom took them to school many times yeah many times that, that entitlement of a parent a or parent just, will just go this is perfect yeah. I, i'm gonna take these or a lot of times i mean i i just think of it in terms of the way of like having like leftovers from the night before and then i get up super excited to eat my like quesadilla like half quesadilla in the morning and i would go and my mom's like oh no i thought that was for me you, you always bring me leftovers and i'm like no i want my quesadilla too late buddy yeah yeah ah, that would piss me off oh yeah 
He could face up to five years in jail. Well, his mom should face fine. five years in jail. Yeah, she was the supplier she's, to the old folks. She's a thief. Yeah, I think that she could claim, uh, you know what, in a court of law, you guys are going to lose because they're gonna. she's going to go, I didn't know. He didn't put a sign on it. How do I know they're pot brownies? And you know who made the pot brownies? Rev and Steve, you're both in jail. This, this is going to strain their relationship, I yeah. feel. Oh, I have a conspiracy theory. What if the mom was tired of her son living with her? And she's like, I know how I'll get him out of my house. Oh, see, I believe right. that. By yeah. having him get arrested? Yeah, yeah. sounds like she's She must terrible. really not like him. Oh, see, I thought you were just going to yeah. say she just stole his brownies. Like, that pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Somebody yeah. just texted and said, it's, it's okay to identify who it was at work. That Steve the Thrill Hill talks about it on the air all the time. That's funny. I'm not even. Con- I don't even know that story. This has nothing to do with Steve the Thrill Hill. Yeah, this doesn't have anything. Yeah, that's, that's not. No, thrill. Steve was no the guy. The the. the well, I said the guy, but should have kept it. So <laughs> yeah, I was doing a good job <laughs> yeah. of keeping yeah. the pronouns out of it, BJ. But that person, they. Yeah, the person who uh, was a perpetrator of this activity that we talked about. Uh, this person got fired. Yeah. Yeah, so and so what was so we're not talking about Steve the Thrill Hill. This person got fired. So that's hilarious maybe, that it happened to Thrill as well. Yeah, Thrill. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm wondering if it was. Is it a shock that Steve the Thrill Hill was involved in giving you some sort of you know mind altering substance? No. There was that one Halloween where somebody came in and she was dressed as a fairy and she brought all these delicious treats in and Thrill and Miles were there. And Miles kept saying, "Do these have pot in them?" Ha ha ha! And I thought that was the joke. So you know, she gave us all a bunch. We're about to record Geek Nation. And I'm about to plop one in my mouth until BJ points out, you realize there's a lot of marijuana in that, right? Oh, boy. And I was like, bleh, bleh. nope, I did not. I thought that was the joke. So I actually have to thank BJ on that one. Otherwise, oh, I would not have, been, not have been a good time. Dude, I remember like forever. I was like coming up on close to 20 years ago. And I remember working at the end and we were like giving away tickets to see Eminem or something. Along. I think nice. it was definitely Eminem. I remember this because it had something to do with this thing. So this this woman won the tickets, and then she came to pick up the tickets and was so appreciative, even though all we did was like your number and calling her and She made me cookies as a thank you. Mm-hmm. And they were like, it was like in a tin, and there were two bags. It was like regular chocolate chip, and then uh, cookies with M&M, M&Ms in them. Oh, nice. So like, those were like the chips. And in the letter, it just said, enjoy the cookies, and then dot, 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 the ones with M&Ms in them are highly tasty, with like all caps. Oh, like the word high. You're supposed I to get that. I wasn't really aware of edibles at the time. Uh, like, oh, I didn't oh, know what no. the hell. So I was just like, if they're highly tasty. I, I, I got to try them. at work. And I remember I, I stayed at work for the rest of the day because I was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't function. Like, wow. Because at that time, I had no idea that anything about edibles weren't really on my radar. And so did you know that's what was wrong with you? Did you get did you put two and two together eventually? Yeah, about an hour or so later I realized I'm really high. And that oh, highly okay. from the highly tasty meant that these were we I was stoked, but I just wish I wouldn't have eaten them at work. Yeah. You know? Like I was like this <laughs> the is worst awful. place. I was like, this bag of cookies is gonna come in handy at home. I wasn't like, Oh my gosh, let me get her arrested. She picked the right person to give them to, but I would I did not know that that was what it was. Yeah, I would have been pissed because I didn't know about edibles back in those days, and I don't think I would have got the highly tasty. I would, so I would have probably had them, and in, in the, who knows if I would have started driving, go home. You just can't be an idiot like that. You just you have to tell people I am putting a mind altering substance in something. You really have to be clear about that. Yeah, but I think she was thinking, oh, what idiot's not going to realize that? This idiot. Yeah, well, but didn't want to point little, blank yeah. say, hey, Steve, there's weed in these cookies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was a different time. So yeah, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So she knew enough to not say there's weed in the cookies but i think again she goes to jail if you if you cause any problems she's going to jail and i remember i, I do remember them being like these aren't really all that tasty like it was just like <laughs> these are not <laughs> highly Why tasty taste like plants because if yeah. you remember the day back those days like they weren't as good of um chefs or or bakers yes. when it came to like making weed like weed cookies just tasted like a cookie that was made out of weed yeah 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 like i remember well, when like you got your hands on like weed butter oh you'd have so much fun with that because I'd be like, let's spread it on toast, and I just have weed toast, or yeah. melt it and pour it on butter. I've got or on uh, popcorn. I've got weed popcorn. <laughs> weed popcorn <laughs> doesn't taste good at all. No, no, it was green. Yeah, it looked moldy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Things have gotten a lot better when it comes to like edibles. Well, it's because you know what? You, you, you when you make things legal, you really get to have professionals involved. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you don't have this backroom activity. So it's like, how can you not smell, uh, tell that there's weed in the cookies or brownies? You can smell the weed from three rooms away. Not in every instance. I mean, back in the day, and I don't have the best sense of smell, but I mean, in general. That's the other thing, yeah. Like, that story with, like, the coworker. I don't think anyone would have noticed. 
Yeah, I Clearly. um I don't think yeah, I, I, I don't think I've I've had I've had edibles before. Now again, maybe they're the new style, but yeah, I didn't you wouldn't tell from the edible by smelling it that it was that it was an edible. Remember the go to to kind of mask the scent or it was uh making a mint chocolate chips or something like uh, that. Like that helped. Um, at least back in the day. <laughs> All the tricks. Well, I got a new study. 43% of the people say they're the, that they're the one in their household who constantly has to nag everyone else to do stuff like chores that they've been putting off. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> oh, you don't have to, you're you not the nagger? No. No. <laughs> no. no. I'm the really, person that's being told to do things. Yeah, I think that's just how it is. I, I, I you know, I mean, I think, you know, you, if opposites attract, you're going to have somebody who's, you know, Pretty much clean and, uh, you know, cares about it. In all fairness, though, my wife doesn't really, like, lay into me with that. It's more myself. I nag myself. And then when I get to it, I don't do it. Like, this morning. So I'm you're like, the nag of yourself in yes. your own household. I'm That's like, a on, very Steve, bizarre situation. When you get home today, you need to take down those extra Christmas lights that are just still up. Mm. Yeah, come and on, And then I'll get home and I'll be like, Steve, I'm tired. I don't want to do it today. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> and then I left work this morning and I looked out of our house. I'm like, Steve, come on. When are you going to get this done? <laughs> Well, you got a holiday weekend coming up, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, today is the day. I'm doing it today. Oh, oh today's oh. the day. Oh, all right. Unless something comes up. I was yeah. going to say, I want an update tomorrow. I feel, like this should, I feel like there should be more people at that meeting of the Steves, is yeah. it, really, because you're not getting a lot done. <laughs> Steve is not being very uh, persuasive. No. He's like, eat yeah. those cookies with M&Ms in them, Steve. <laughs> Get to it later. Here's the other side of this, though. Since we have someone in our relationship that nags us, how about, like, about 62% of us have intentionally not done something just to annoy the nagger. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh. the person who'd be nagging us. See, yeah. I've, I, I, I don't nag, but uh, I'll intentionally, intentionally leave something just to see if they eventually get to it. And I, it'll, sometimes it'll wait a very, very long time, and then it'll come to, like, fine, I'll do it. And then it's, like, making a lot of loud noises and being very passive-aggressive about and it. And how your cats react to this. And lots, and lots of sighing loudly. Do you remember yeah. one of the coolest things? I remember when we did our like our uh, marriage. Uh, uh, what the hell is it? The, the when you talk to the pastor before you get counseling, married. premarital counseling. Yeah, sure, we'll call it that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember one of the coolest things he said. It was just like, look, don't let those little things get under your skin. Like if you get mad because like your significant other doesn't keep like oh never closes the cabinet door. Instead of walking in and being mad at them for clo- not closing it, just close it. It doesn't like what's. Why are you getting so worked up over that? It clearly, you know what I mean. It bothers you. It didn't bother them, but you're mad at them because it didn't bother. Them. It's and I, I always keep that in the back of my mind. Like if there was something like you, I went, oh, I can't believe you uh, didn't turn that bathroom light off. I'm like, I'll just turn the bathroom light off. That saves a headache. Yeah, I had a I had a good realization of that of like realizing that I was getting mad about something and being like, well, why don't you ever? Do-? I think it was the the, the toilet paper roll mm-hmm. to my girlfriend. I was like, why don't you ever replace that? And she's like, oh, because it honestly doesn't bug me. And I was like, oh. It's That's good. right. It doesn't bug you. It bugs me. So why don't I just do it? Right. So you're mad at her because it's bothering you. Yeah. And so Which I don't. Not fair. Nothing bugs me anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah. I got. I still have to learn that one. Yeah. How I long do. you been married again? Oh, it's uh, it's over thirty five years, sir. It'll happen. Yeah. 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 Not, I mean, yeah. I mean, I got time. I don't I know mean, how you much. You kicked her out of your house. So at that point, you yeah. Know, you did not kick her. She <laughs> left that house. <laughs> yeah. That's, let's be honest. Everybody, everybody, Sarah, has some, has seemed to leave the house. Not turning off lights when you leave a room is like one of the number one things that people nag each other about. You know, the only problem with that, again, is if you leave a cabinet door open, you know, you're not losing anything. But leaving electricity going, that bothers me. It's like, well, that costs money. You are wasting electricity by leaving a light on in a room that you're not going to be in. I, you know, I mean, I feel like you have a, leg- I think you have, I have a complaint. Yeah, I just never noticed my bill being that big of a difference. Like, man, you know, we would have saved 47 cents if you would have just shut that light off four hours. <laughs> that ago. 47 cents after it many adds up. years. Right. Adds I could have bought a car. See, the problem is I've, re- I, I've, I've been lectured too many <laughs> times by carbon neutrally people who say it all adds up when you have that person in every household doing that. You know, it's like it's not just your house. It's all the households where someone leaves lights on. And I think that all right, Captain if we, Planet. Well, I know. I'm just saying that's those are the people yapping at me. So I got it in my head. I'm now Captain Planet. Uh, not, how about not cleaning up after yourself in general? I feel like that's isn't that fair to be upset about? I mean, you know, closing a cabinet door, sure, but I mean, you know, why, why, why can't you clean up after yourself? I mean, that's just a basic human thing, right? Yeah, that's then you're like a slob. Yeah. 
Maybe your underwear just are on the by the bed all day. But by your you logic, could've... you could pick it up. It doesn't bother them, right? Yeah, I, I, I am, there's shades of gray with this logic. Oh, here we go. PJ. See, uh, yeah, I feel not like... everything's black and white, bra. It's Brah. like, well, I mean, it, you know, if you can, if, I mean, some people may not like cabinets open. Some people may not like lights on. So well, some, some people, people don't like picking up their dirty underwear. I mean, I should be able to do that. I, you know, that well, seems a see, this ridiculous. is the, this is where you're going to have see you, you're going to have the fight. I'm I, I'm saying I'm all the way. I'm it's not like, having a fight. I'm, I'm not married yeah. to you. I don't think that. that no, but fight I mean, will never happen. You would have the fight if your wife was that way. You know, and I know a lot of people that don't pick up after themselves, and I just my brain doesn't get it. But that's how they like to live. They don't care. I know there's a certain level of like it feels like disrespect. I hear from a lot of my married friends that one of the things that bugs them is when their significant other throws their laundry on the floor next to the hamper. That's like, hilarious. Like, Sometimes you're going to wear every, it again, Vicky. Every okay? single time. Like, Sometimes you're just down on yourself for missing the shot. Yeah. You just walk away in sadness. Or like, just, you're going to wear those jeans again, but you don't want to put them with your clean clothes because they're not clean, but they're not dirty enough to go in the hamper. And yet. that's why you put oh. it on the side of the hamper. Or on yeah. top of the dryer. Okay. Right. Yeah. Or on yeah. the designated chair that everyone seems to have for laundry. Yeah. God, I need a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Oh, I hate that. I, I've always hated that. I don't, I don't, I, 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 again, that's me though. Laundry, once it's done, it's, oh, it's put away. There's no chair. What are you oh. talking about? I, 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 I will fold the laundry, but then I put it on top of the dryer. And then at some point, I'm probably going to wear that shirt again anyway. So I put it in a drawer. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I've got like this giant leaning tower yeah, that's, of T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you you and I be going back to that premarital class. And I'd be like, I'm, I'm done with him. I, but, uh, I was going to say, I'm super screwed because I have a king size bed. It's just me. And all my clothes is on the other half of the bed. So if I ever get a significant other, I don't know what I'm going to do. Wait, so you go to bed with the clothes just on the bed? It's on the other side, so I never even feel it or touch it. That would yes. bother me. That would like, bother just because yeah. it doesn't touch me, like, I literally you sleep guys are in, like, so the funny. tiniest, tiniest It's corner. okay to put them on the laundry and have it stack up to a tower, but if you put it on a bed, that that's the, the problem. Here's the thing. Yeah. I crash. That's, at night, um, yeah, so I'm a flopper, night, so night yeah, they got to refold everything. Yeah, exactly. if the only they had a, do- if they only created like I don't know some sort of box that you could put your stuff in once it's done. I don't know, maybe if it had drawers or something, like so a laundry have- box. That sounds, yeah. silly. you know, something you could put your clothes in once they're clean, and then you can mm-hmm. maybe even have them separate. If I you can find that, let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'm gonna go. You know, maybe the CES, the new show that they had in Vegas this year, maybe they created something. I don't That'd know. Be great. I don't think guys go through this too much, but my problem is I'll put something on. Everything's folded. Everything's put it away. I'll try something. I'm like, you know what? I don't like the way this looks or feels today. Let me take it off. And then instead of folding it, I put it on the bed. And then 10 minutes later, I have a giant pile again. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like it every single time. So there's almost no point in putting anything away. Just leave it in the basket. That's the spirit. Wow, I I don't even know what to say to that. So I, instead, yeah. it drives me crazy when my wife will put her trash while eating, like a napkin or a candy wrapper, in the sink. I would complain to her about it, but she's the one that mainly does the dishes, so I stopped complaining about it. That's, yeah, that's kind of weird. in the sink is strange, but I mean, if she's the one cleaning it, that's then... my thing. Yeah, it's like if if you're the one that's hand, I'm, who am I to tell you what to do if you're the one doing it and I'm yeah. not? Yeah. yeah, if you're a person that just likes everything in its place and everything has a place. Uh, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it, it'll make your brain crazy. But I am still weirded out by Vicky sleeping with her laundry. Yes, yeah. kind of am, yeah. It, it's nice and warm and it cuddles me at night sometimes, okay? Well, yeah. then just get a man. I'm trying. Wow. There's no freaking wow. pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get a man when you don't have any room for him on the bed, Steve. <laughs> yeah, where's his, what, is he, what is he getting between the t shirts and, the, and yeah. the pants, or where does he get the light? He yeah. gets to lay on the couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is going to be your, but wait, what about us? No, sorry, ain't going to happen. Uh, you know, what my favorite shirt's got that pillow right there. I, I think why it bothers me is when I was an apartment manager and like we we had this one woman, Helen, she was like a hoarder and she was just like oh mm. like since the sixties. I've told you about this oh, woman. Like yeah. it was yeah. epic. Like to the point where a plumber came in, I'm like, dude, just to warn you this lady's a hoarder, and it's pretty epic in there. He's like, I've seen it all. Not a big deal. Open up the door. He turns. He goes, find another plumber. Turned around and left. Oh, because it was just like magazines everywhere. It was just it was smell everything. But she, when we had to go fix stuff, you'd walk into her bedroom, and, like work on a radiator or whatever, and 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 like she, her bed had enough room for her to sleep in. Like, but then the rest of it were magazines and newspapers and just oh, stacked on top. Wow. of Wow. And I was just like, wow. Like she cuddles with. Yeah, a newspaper, like it's so yeah. and like so. When you say that, I just instantly think that like you're just one step away from becoming Helen. Oh yeah, Vicky, you are, yes, you, are you are, you yeah, you are Helen. We're changing her name. We're changing Vicky's name to Helen. 
It was pretty epic, though, worse. bro. Like, there, she had a wall, and she took a. She went to one of those photo booths where you get like the little mini pictures of yourself. She did that every day since the sixties, and the wall had a. She stapled that picture up on the wall. Okay. That's kind of neat. It was pretty is cool. It, though? it was. Really? Like, out of I'm, all of it, like, that is the neat yeah. part. Everything else is kind of gnarly. Like, yeah. you get kind of lost in that wall because you kind of, like, look at it and just see the evolution of Helen. Yeah, I'm When not she sure. moved out, man, I was like, I should quit this job. I don't yeah. want to be a part of having to uh, clean that out. Oh, yeah. You yeah, you just got to set fire to that apartment. That's what Dude, you have to do. It was over five figures to, to, to clean out her apartment wow. when she moved out. I wow. It. She yeah. just burnt it to the ground. Yeah. That's, well, we uh, all want to still live there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then just, uh, just her apartment then, you know, yeah. just yeah, maybe just keep it as a local fire like in that room. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. What yeah. was World War I known as before World War II? World War. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Uh, wow. The Great War. Yes. Oh, nice work, buddy. Thank you. Nice I know my comeback. history. <laughs> You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206 421 Rock. We'll play Beat Migs at 850 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener uh, My house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history, but the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com schoolzonesafety 3M Science. Applied to life.